This is FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. Here are a few things we noticed in the news this week. Beltway journalists are consumed at the moment with questions about the Obama campaign's claims about Mitt Romney's tenure at Bain Capital. Did he promote outsourcing? Did he leave when he said he did? Well, one outlet found a voice willing to deliver a judgment. CNN published an online column July 16th by veteran pundit David Gergen, headlined, Facts Don't Support Obama's Charges Against Romney. Strong stuff for someone like Gergen. He usually talks about campaign strategy and the like, rather than assessing politicians' claims. But you don't have to read too far into the piece to realize you can stop reading it. Here's paragraph two. Let me acknowledge up front what I have said several times on CNN. I have a past relationship with the top partners at Bain that is both personal and financial. I have worked with them in support of nonprofit organizations such as City Year. I have given a couple of paid speeches for Bain dinners, as I have for many other groups. I was on the board for a for-profit child care company, Bright Horizons, that was purchased by Bain Capital. It was a transaction with financial benefits for all board members and shareholders, including me. Well, say no more. Except he does. After explaining his assessment that Romney hasn't lied or even misled anyone, Gergen explains how he arrived at that view. CNN asked him to look into the issue, he says, and I reached two of the top people whom I know in the company, and on background, they told me the same story that Bain sources told CNN's John King. Well, no further questions then for David Gergen, but a big one for CNN. What possible use did you think readers could make of that? Pundits like the New York Times' Tom Friedman and Nicholas Kristof like to lament how Palestinian activism lacks a nonviolent strategy. Where is the Palestinian Gandhi, we hear, who could inspire those violent Arab masses to lay down their weapons? Well, Mahmoud Sarzak, a professional Palestinian soccer player, was recently released from an Israeli prison after a three-month hunger strike. He'd been imprisoned for three years without charge or trial because Israeli security forces said he was a member of Islamic Jihad. Sarzak's release came just months after 33-year-old baker Kader Adnan won his freedom after a hunger strike. But Sarzak's release, like Adnan's, received almost no attention in the U.S. corporate media. We found one AP dispatch, cut down to a few sentences, in the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette's sports section. Of course, thousands of Palestinians have rejected violence as the most effective means to fight the apartheid system they live under, some in favor of what Sarzak called the revolution of empty stomachs. But somehow the pundits who claim to be waiting for examples of peaceful resistance just don't seem to notice. And finally, we know corporate media don't have a lot of love for Occupy Wall Street, but connecting the protest movement to a 2004 murder? Sounds far-fetched, but a few news outlets showed that where there's a will, there's a way. The New York City NBC affiliate framed the story like this. Chuck, this startling new evidence seems to have come out of nowhere. Sources tell us DNA found at the 2004 murder scene is a match to DNA left behind by recent subway vandals linked to the Occupy Wall Street movement. The next day, DNA at protest scene is said to be linked to 2004 killing was the headline in the New York Times. The Murdoch tabloid New York Post exercised typical caution with a full page cover claiming OWS murder link. The story lasted a day. It turns out the DNA match was a police department employee who worked with the medical examiner's office who presumably handled both samples. So how did the New York Post climb down from its lurid cover story? A tiny four paragraph story inside the paper under the headline 04 slay DNA contaminated. Well, the outcome was no surprise to crime scene experts. They say DNA databases regularly turn up matches without making the front page of the day's paper. Then again, most DNA matches don't give you a chance to insinuate that a political movement dedicated to criticizing economic inequality is really a nest of criminals. I'm Janine Jackson. This is Fair TV.